Hello Captains, hope you're having a wonderful time out there and welcome back to my Let's Play Star Trek Online Age of Discovery DSC Starfleet Faction character. I am on the character Mirror Ricky and here is the Malakowski class starship. And you can see I am level uh, 6 at the moment. So in the uh, very first episode of this series, uh, we played. I played the tutorial all the way through. Very long tutorial. We saw how it was similar to the already established tutorial for the Federation. Then we played the next mission. And uh, then the following mission last time was Downfall. And uh, that's all of the Star Trek Discovery missions that are in the game right now. As you can see, Secrets and then Downfall. And then now we are thrust into the future. We are now in the 25th century as of Downfall. Watch that if you, do, if you want to understand how and why. And we can start the Klingon War stuff. Now, before we get there, there is actually one more thing we can do. And I don't know why it's not showing up here. Oh, I see why. Because they've actually put it under Klingon War. And that is the Task Force Operations Age of Discovery. That's what I'm going to play today. That's what we're playing today. And in fact, I may make two videos out of that, out of this. Um, but before we get to that, I need to cover a few things, so bear with me. This is going to take a few minutes until we get to the Task Force Operation, uh, which is Starbase 1, by the way. So just bear with me as I go through uh, a few things before we get there, because I have made changes to this character in terms of its build uh, on the starship. I've made it better, and that's going to allow us to have a better experience. But I want to go over all that with you, if you will allow me. The very first thing I want to cover is actually going back to the mission Downfall and Starbase 1. In that mission, I asked the question, why, why Starbase 1? Where did that come from? I've never heard of it before. And thankfully, you all have filled me in with information. And it shows that I do rely on you for feedback because I cannot remember everything. I have a brain. It's a normal. It's not a positronic brain. It's a normal human brain. I can only recall so much stuff. Now, I have seen all of Season 1 of Discovery, but you have to understand this was, of course, like a year ago now. It was a long time ago. Also, uh, Discovery changed quite a bit in the second half of the season. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. The plot and everything just took a 180 and went in a totally different direction. And so the first part or first half of the season was kind of forgotten. And uh, even during that first part of the first season, I really didn't pay attention maybe as much as I should have. There was just so much new stuff to learn that we had not seen before in Star Trek and uh, plus it was very jarring being you know a really different universe than what we were used to so yes I forgot some stuff along the way and maybe I do need to rewatch it uh, but I digress you guys filled me in on information about Starbase One and so I have here printed in my hand right now I printed this from Memory Alpha and I'm gonna read it to you just because we're about to play a mission that deals with Starbase One I wanna fill you in with what information there is about it. That way we're just a little more aware of the Starbase that we will be defending today. Okay, so this comes from a quote from Katrina Cornwell in 2257 in the episode called The War Without, The War Within of Star Trek Discovery. Quote, there are 80,000 souls on that base a large contingent of our leadership, and at least three starships. The Klingons are practically in Earth's backyard. So this is was a very large starbase, 80,000 people at one time on this thing, three starships. This was a large starbase. So there was a lot of people here. Now, where is this thing located? Well, it was administered by Starfleet, and it was located 100 AU from Earth near a planetary body. In the 2250s, the Starbase was home to over 80,000 Federation personnel. So being 100 AU from uh, Earth, 
means that it is on the outside edge of the of the uh, of the solar system. I almost said galaxy, then I almost said universe. That would make no sense. It's on the outside edge of the solar system. So beyond Pluto, probably in what people are saying is maybe somewhere in the Oort cloud, which exists on the outer edge of our solar system. And apparently there was a planet way out there. Uh, I mean, it's possible. There are theories now that suggest there is a planet hanging out there way far away. We just can't see it because it's so dark and so cold and uh, maybe hidden. So it's possible that there is a large planetoid out there. We don't know. But according to at least Discovery, there is a planetary body out there. And they have a star base called Starbase 1 around it. And then and there's a lot of people there. So that kind of puts a buffer between, you know, our solar system and, let's say, Earth. Which I like that idea. I like the fact that if we're going to build a star base around Earth, let's also build one on the outer edge of the solar system. Kind of protecting that outer edge and seeing what ships are coming into our solar system and so forth. I like that idea. So the idea of the star base is pretty cool. Um... So it also says here, during the Federation Klingon War, the starbase was attacked and occupied by the House of de Gore. The battle went undetected until the USS Discovery arrived and found no life signs were to be found of the 80,000 Federation inhabitants, which included a large contingent of leadership. Instead, 274 Klingon life signs were detected on the station, as was a painted-on crest of the House of de Gore, in the episode The War Without the War Within. And it says here, it goes on to say, the established distance from Earth places the starbase in the scattered disk of the Sol system. It may orbit one of the many icy dwarf planets found in this region of space. Close inspection of the planet shown uh, below the starbase seems to reveal features from Earth, such as Lake Michigan and the Florida Peninsula. The later must likely be regarded as a VFX error. They probably just use a stand-in, you know, planet, Earth, planet-looking thing. So that's where this came from. came from that episode, The War Without, The War Within. 80,000 people perished, 274 Klingon life signs, and they had painted on a Klingon symbol. The House of de Gore did this. So that's really on the doorstep of the Federation, or Starfleet. So that's terrible. That's terrible. They came really close. So that provides information on Starbase 1. Now we know what we are dealing with when we defended it in the last mission and uh, what we're about to go defend today. So again, thank you for all the feedback on that. I do rely on your feedback and I do read it. So I really, really, really appreciate that. Remember, I cannot remember everything, so I look to you guys to fill me in on the stuff that I can't remember. And I'm sure other people are in that same position. All right, here's the Malakowski. Now, here's what I've done. Because we are now at Earth Space Dock, I can use my energy credits, I can use exchange, I can use all this great stuff to upgrade my ship, and that is what I have done. Now, I can only use up to Mark II stuff right now. Until I get to level 10, then we can use Mark IV stuff. So I'm, I'm maxed out at Mark II. So keep that in mind, Mark II stuff. Um, now, I have got an email from somebody, and I just want to show you this. Uh, because this is a very nice person indeed. Dead man, dead man. Thank you so much. Uh, he has actually, he or she, has given me a ton of uh, Mark II very rare gear. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get this till after I had already equipped my ship uh, myself. But the great thing about this stuff is I can, of course, upgrade it. So I will put this good stuff to use. So thank you very much for this... Uh, this email and uh, all this loot. I mean, it is it is very much appreciated and it's going to help this character grow for sure. So um, if anybody, uh, you know, ever wants to contact me in email, just remember to use my at name. It's at the doctor, at the dash doctor dot. There's a little period at the end of the doctor. I think I can show it in chat here. Yeah, it's at the dash doctor period. Don't forget the period. If you forget that, I will not get it. So the dash doctor period, if you ever want to send me a message in, on the uh, game or whatever, there you go. Now, let's get to the build that I created just for, you know, the next couple of runs, because again, we're getting close to level 10, and then I get to upgrade, you know, to new stuff. 
What I have done on my ship is I went ahead and stuck with the Mark II Phaser Beam Array, and it's got a damage on it. I've also got a prototype Photon, photon Torpedo Mark II. Um, I've got a Neutrino Deflector. Uh, it's got Control X, but it's uncommon. Uh, good enough for right now. Improves control effects, improves energy shield drain, improves detection of cloaked ships. I got a Mark II Impulse Engine with speed on it for flight speed, more flight speed. And this was actually really cheap, so I just went with this. It's a deuterium stabilized warp core. It's got uh, E-cap, shield to engine, and sector speed. I wanted something that really made my ship faster because it's very slow at this level. So I wanted something to increase the engine speed. So that's why I chose that. Shield array Mark II with uh, disruptor. I got uh, phaser beam array Mark II with damage. I've got a neutronium alloy Mark II, all damage resistance. And I've got a maximum shield capacity plus 5%. And then, of course, I put on a phaser relay with uh, X to uh, increase my phaser damage. And uh, in terms of my stations, uh, again, I only have instant powers on here. So I've got emergency power to weapons, torpedo high yield, and a tractor beam. For now, that's it. That's the build. Oh, and traits. I did put some different traits on here for space. I have Warp Theorist on here, I've got Accurate, and Beam Training. And that's all I've got right now, that's all I can use for space. Uh, so what does that give me here on my stats? It gives me a Stealth Detection Rating of 10.71, Power Transfer of 110%, Defense Rating 11.5, my hull is at 10,000 hull, my uh, hull repair rate 65% a minute, my Shield Strength is 2.8k, very low of course. 7% resistance across the board. Uh, my crit severity is 50%. Crit chance is 2.5. And, and my turn rate is 13.9 degrees per second. So obviously very low end stuff here. But of course we are only uh, level 6 in a light cruiser. So this thing ain't going to do a whole lot. But I'm interested to see what it can do in space battle here with this setup. Again, I want to get the most out of the Malakowski before I upgrade to the other one, the Walker class or whatever. As for my ground character, I just also uh, kind of, I don't think I actually have messed with it. Yeah, I haven't messed with the ground yet, just space. So that's what I'm running on space, and now it's time to go do this thing. So what we want to do first, because this is actually part of the storyline is we've already I've already done welcome to earth uh, find out about your new assignment uh, as a temporal agent did all that now it's time for the first task force this is called uh, defend starbase one contact admiral Jarrell Quinn history is often the means to predicting future conflicts and resolving them as peacefully as possible the history of the Federation and the Klingon Empire is heavily dominated by our conflicts centuries ago they were dedicated foes. The Klingons nearly brought the Federation to an end in the middle of the 23rd century. As we move into the future, understanding the Klingons may keep us out of another such conflict. We have a mission simulation for you to undertake that revisits one of the famous conflicts of that era. Join a task group to participate in that operation. Join and complete the Defense of Starbase One Task Force. Now again, it says simulation. So everything that we are playing now on this character is basically us going into the holodeck and playing it. It's all a simulation. It means nothing. And that's one thing I don't like about how they've done this, and they did this with the Jim Hadar too, is that all the missions don't really mean anything. We're just playing holodeck simulations. Which kind of sucks, you know? Wish it would like mean something. Okay, so the, what we're going to do now, we have to actually go here and we have to do s Defense of Starbase 1 and we have to join the queue and it looks like that's the only queue that I can join right now. I can't even do random queues at the moment. I can't do random, can't do nothing else. So really, Defense Starbase 1 at this level anyway, level 6, is all you can do. Now, you can do an advanced version of it. You can do normal and advanced, so that gives you a little more difficulty. I'm going to start with normal because I've never played it before. I have no idea what to expect other than maybe it's similar to Downfall. We have to defend the station from the Klingons, obviously. But I'm going to start with normal because I don't know how to play it. And then after I learn how to play it by playing this, 
then I'll do an advanced run. So I'll probably make two videos of this. One here in normal and then one in advanced. Queue up and it looks like it's ready to pop. So this will be interesting. Now I'm in a, a light cruiser level six. I'm not expecting a whole lot out of this ship, but it is pretty upgraded and I haven't tested it yet with this build. So I'm hoping it works good. So here we are. Listen up. The war has not been going well for the Federation, and the Klingons are advancing to our position. We need to hold off their ships until reinforcements can arrive. We expect the Klingons to attack in waves. In waves, the smaller, okay. smaller, faster ships are hungry for battle. Wave and of won't Klingons. And wait for the rest of their fleet to arrive in one group. As the fight progresses, their heavier ships will show up. Hold, hold them, them off. off until more Starfleet ships can get here. Pretty much what I expected. Dude, your ship fell apart. What ship? Here they come. Okay, so we have basically a whoa. We have to defend the station from the Klingons. Oh man, another 19 levels below me. I guess. Wait a minute. Oh, am I supposed to be level 29 for this? I'm not We're sure. For evac of non-essential personnel and civilians. Oh, look at this. Optional: defend evacuating ships. Well, it's not the worst. See, I'm not moving very fast. My ship is so slow in its movement. Dang, there's a lot of Klingons here. Holy crap. It really hurts not having a lot of weapon slots on this ship. Dang, there are they're just everywhere. Holy crap. Yeah, I can't wait to have more weapon slots. Defeat remaining Klingons. Yeah, see, I'm moving so slow. My impulse is very slow on this ship. Of course, I'm only low level, so... That's what you get. There's a break in incoming warp signatures. We may have a short amount of time before more arrive. Okay. Repair and reposition for next attack. I don't know where to reposition to because I don't know where to go. Let's see what happens. Reading some heavier ships incoming. I'm waiting. And battle cruisers. Whoa. Okay. Heavier ships. An evacuation ship is launching. Them okay, ships are launching. Oh, oh. I get it. Okay, the ship is here and we have to protect it. Ah, I need to get over there then. And that's going to be difficult because I can't move fast. I love that tractor beam though. That worked well. So here's the ship we have to protect. this ship out here it's gonna cause a problem but I 
can't move very fast. Oh, it worked. Okay, they got away. Cool. So that's how the optional works. Okay, there's another ship launching. Looks like we only need to get to four, so... That's not too bad, but I cannot move very fast. I'm trying to get there. Gosh, got a lot of ships right behind me. <laughs> oh, there's just ships way out there. I just can't get there fast enough in this ship. That's a problem. I couldn't get out there if I wanted to. Just not fast. Okay, he got away. Good. Luckily, there's other people here with better ships than me, so they're doing good. Man, a, a whole crew, a whole setup of Malakowski's here would probably not do very the well. Ship is locked. The Klingons are regrouping again. Get into position to prepare for the next uh -oh. assault. And I'm assuming the next wave is going to be even more tougher. See, I just can't move very fast. Wonder Here come if, the Klingon wonder battleships. if you can heal Keep the ship. Oh, there is another Malakowski here. Okay. What are you? He's gonna make it. So that's pretty cool. I like the optional. Yeah, that's nice. Got him. An evacuation ship is launching. Give them cover. Great, they're probably like on the other side of this thing. I can't get there very fast. I literally cannot get over there fast enough. Look at these battleships. Dang, look at that. Okay, those are tough. And I'm only on normal mode. Yeah, this is gonna be a real tough thing on advanced. With this ship, anyway. Ooh, those are tough. Hey, we did it. Oh, and it finished. No, we didn't get Battle all them all for now. I don't know how much longer we can keep up with this kind of I'll world. have to look back, but I good one. At least there will be a tomorrow. I don't think we got all four ships. I don't know how much longer okay earned we earned twenty marks. I don't even know where to start here. Let's, um, ooh, I don't even know what path I'm going to go down. I'm probably going to need fleet stuff. Let's start with that. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Well, I went up to Lieutenant 7, but so 
I don't think we got all four ships there. I think we only got three, so that must be kind of difficult to do on lower levels. And that was just normal. Yeah, playing this on advance is going to be real rough. That'll hold them off for now. But I guess that's all there is to the thing here. That's it. That's the uh, that's defend Starbase One Task Force. I like it. It's nice and simple. It's not overly complicated. And I like that. I like that. I still think this is a great looking space station. I mean, this is just, this is pure art here. This is Star Trek. This is awesome looking. I love the looks of that thing. I mean, that's designed very well. I like that. Maybe missing a few more points for starships to hook up to because I've only got this level here where starships plug into. Maybe it should have another ring like up here where more starships can plug into. That would kind of make more sense because it's very limited to how many ships can be docked at one time. Would kind of want to make it so more than more, more, more ships could dock. But otherwise, I love the looks of that. All right, let's get out of here. So, that is the Defend Starbase 1 Task Force Operation. My first time playing it. And I have to say, I love the simplicity of it. That draws me right into it. It looks like it can go very quickly if you are a high level and you have really good ships. You can probably play it very quickly. And maybe getting the optional is a lot easier then at that point. Let's uh, turn that in. Excellent work. Done. Okay, so we did the first task force operation and the new Starbase One TFO that's part of Discover Age of Discovery. There you go. You see, I cannot replay that specific, you know, mission to start it. Now I would go to Stranded in Space as the first mission, but I can always replay it by going here. Now it looks like there's a cooldown. It looks like there's only a two minute cooldown left on this. So you know what I'm gonna do? I was thinking about making this two videos, but why not let's just make this one big video. I'm sure y'all will love that. I'm gonna wait for this to cool down and then I'm gonna do the advanced run. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, it's gonna be painful. It's gonna be painful, but I'm gonna try it on this ship. The one, the two things that this ship uh, really makes you feel when you're in combat like that is number one, the, the only having two four weapons slots and one aft weapon slot you feel that. It's not enough weapon fire. It's not enough weapons firing. So you feel that. You feel the lack of weapons. And then the ship just moves slow. Even with all the things I have on here. And this uh, this thing increases my flight speed because it's got a speed modifier. So that's plus nine. And then the warp core I have is also increasing my engine speed. It's giving me uh, add seven and a half percent of your shield power to your engine power. So that's increasing my eng engine power and I have an engine power buff that I can enable on that. All that. And my ship still moves so slow. Just so slow. But of course, that's what you get with a ensign or a lieutenant level ship. You know, very, very early on ship. And uh, that's just the way it is. Let's see. I got rotate shield frequency, didn't I? So let's move that here. That'll come in handy. And I'm ready to do an advanced run. Wow, this is going to be interesting. Now that I know how to play this, though, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, at least I know how to play it, but it's just a matter of getting to where I need to go and having the fire. It's going to take a lot of firepower to take down the ships on advanced, I bet. But maybe we'll get some other players who have better ships than me. Maybe that will help. Ten seconds to go. Do I have any damage? I need a heal? No. That was just a normal run. Alright, here we go. Advanced run. Hopefully this will go very quickly. And uh, when am I going to upgrade to the Walker class, you ask? Well, I might actually do it when I hit level 10. Because there's really no point in using this ship past level 10. This is a l up to level 10 ship. That's about its only usefulness. And then you probably want a better ship. 
I mean, I guess you could play it from level 10 to 20 and then upgrade your ship, but... Oh, yeah, maybe I will, but there's just not a lot in it, you know what I mean? But I could try, maybe. Try to just get the most out of it and then upgrade to that new that other ship I have. And the ship I'm talking about, which I will upgrade to, is the um, Prototype Light Exploration Cruiser, which is an auto-leveling ship up to Tier 4. So I, I can't wait to get into that. That'll be fun, but I just want to make sure I can get the most I get the most playable experience out of this ship first. And show you what it is kind of capable of. So yeah, maybe I'll take it to tier four gear, you know, Mark IV gear. I mean, and then after that, after level twenty, then I'll upgrade to the other one. And by that time, that'll be the next twenty grades will be tier three and four. So that will that will that that's probably the best way to do it. We'll just cut it in half like that. If none of that made sense, don't worry. It makes sense to me, and I have a plan. That's the most important part. I have a plan. I now have a plan. Okay, here we Listen are. Listen up. The war We're on advance. We got a full team. We're good. Hello. Good luck. Why am I thing not scrolling? In a in a small crappy ship. In a small crappy ship is I. But here we go. On here they come. Okay, so this should technically be a level fifty three mission. Gravity well would definitely be a good thing in this map. I'm trying to keep up. It ain't easy. Breaking incoming warp signatures. We may have a short amount of time before more arrive. All right. So second wave, and this is where the ships will start launching, I believe. Reading some heavier ships incoming. Raiders and battle cruisers.
one is away. The evacuation ship is launching. Give them cover. Let's get another one. If I can get over there. I think you can heal the ships. I don't have anything to heal them with, but I think you can. Okay, he got away. Good. That's two. Let's see if we can get all of them. This time. Where's another one? I'm ready to get there. An evacuation ship there is launching. Is. Give them cover. The Klingons are regrouping again. Get into position to oh, prepare no. for the next assault. Now we got the tough ships coming. Klingon battleships. Keep fighting. Wow, they just keep going out one after another. Hey, we got that one. See where the next one's gonna pop up at. Maybe we can get all four this time. An evacuation ship is launching. Get them cover. I think we're going to get all four this time. No. What? It was so Battle close. For now. I don't know how We got 60. We, we got 60 marks, but we're still one ship short. How did that happen? Battle hold them. Well, that's twice in a row now, and we had pretty good ships in this one. We had a lot of good people playing this one. A lot of good ships, but Congratulations. We still miss the fourth ship. How does that happen? Well, I don't know what it exactly takes to get the fourth ship. Maybe you just have to be faster. Maybe that's the key. I don't know. Well, anyway, we've now played Defense of Starbase 1 twice. And I do have to say I like this task force operation. Very simple, very cool, very easy to play. Very nice. I like it. I can see myself playing this over and over again for marks. So that's quite cool. Alright, I enjoyed that. It's a good experience. And I'm gonna keep playing that when I need to. For to level up or to do whatever. I am now Lieutenant 8. I'm so close to 10, so I mean I might as well just play a couple more and get to 10, which is probably what I'll do. But yeah, that's real nice. Oh, what do I need here? Let's see. Do you have... You have leadership. 
You have nothing. And you have nothing. Leadership is good. Do I need a tactical officer? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll take you anyway. Okay, so, wow. Working my way up there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get to 10. Oh, now I got s more skills to spend. Yes. Get my energy weapon training up so I can make some kills. Good, 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 good. Okay, well, there you go, everybody. That is Defense of Starbase 1 Task Force Operation and a continuing look at the Age of Discovery faction, playing it on the Age of Discovery faction. Again, there's only two missions, and then that TFO, and then you're just in the Klingon War stuff, which is like everything else. There will be more missions coming, from what I hear. I just don't know when, so when there are, I'll make new videos about it. Uh, at this point, what I'm going to do, as far as future videos for this playthrough goes, I'm going to start playing the missions on this character, so that I can just get them played and start leveling up the character. And uh, if I see anything that's different in a mission or whatever, I will go. I will record it. I'll play it again and record it to show you what is different or unique about it. Uh, so expect new videos if something is different. I will also show you new videos when I upgrade to a new starship. Um, I'm going to definitely be upgrading this starship. You know, after about ten levels from now, to that other one. Um, but I'm also going to show you any new builds. So like when I when the, when I hit level 10 on this starship, I'm going to go ahead and put level 4 gear on it, mark 4 gear and upgrade it. And so what I will do is I will upgrade it to mark 4 stuff and it'll be a lot better. And then what I'll do is I'll make a video showing you that build and I'll make a video showing you combat of the ship with that better build, with those that better gear just so you can see the ship in the best light possible. You can see what it's like when it's all geared out and then when I hit like level 20 I'll probably upgrade to that other ship and then I'll make a video for that I'll show you upgrading to the ship I'll show you the build I do on that and I'll take that into battle and then that's how I'm just gonna do it along the way I'm just gonna keep upgrading my ships and when I make a new upgrade or a new build and I wanna show it to you in combat I will make new videos for that and there are discovery era ships that I have learned that are uh, worth looking at. In fact, I didn't realize this, but the new ship that's out right now, the Europa, uh, what's it? Uh, I think it's under tier six, but it's called the Europa. It is actually a based off of a Discovery era ship, so there is a Discovery skin for it, and it is actually based off of a Discovery era ship. So I can go ahead and actually use that ship when I hit tier six. Uh, as one of my ships if I want to and test it out and everything here it is the Europa heavy battle cruiser this one they just released this is actually based off of a discovery design the quad nacelle discovery design and there is a um, skin for it that makes it look like the discovery style ship so that's a tier 6 ship it's a mid 23rd century Starfleet ship but you know updated it is tier 6 so there are tier 6 options when I get up to tier 6 with uh, Discovery era style ships. So I will be doing reviews on those ships and uh, looking at that as I continue to upgrade this character and get as many of those ships as I can. And so that's what I'll do. That's where new videos will come from with this. You'll see ship upgrades, ship builds, ship combat that are related to the Discovery era. And you will see any new missions that they release that are dedicated to the Discovery era. And then if I see anything new or different or exciting to show you, then I'll make a new video for that. And that's what you can expect out of this uh, series. So the next thing I'm going to show will be upgrading this ship to Mark IV gear and taking it into combat with some more upgrades before I go to the next ship. That's what we'll do. Okay, so there you go, everybody. You know what to expect. You know what's coming. And I hope you stay along for the ride. I will explore all of the Discovery Era stuff there is to explore. We'll see what's going on. But I do like the Defend Starbase 1 TFO. That is a really, really fun and cool TFO, and I enjoy that a lot. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.